so we <coughs> just describe the body shapes with uh, so many uh, what got fruits like apple, banana, or pear, rectangle. So this is our traditional android apple shaped body with a big fat belly like me. <laughs> and then this is a traditional female kinoid <coughs> structure with high and subcutaneous fat. If you go into detail, there are so many fat distribution, android, upper body obesity, stomach centered, or swollen stomach obesity, or what would call lower or upper body obesity. In the gynoid, there's a lower body <coughs> obesity. And next I want to say that obesity as inflammation. As I have said, the adipose tissue, they have the capacity or they are capable of producing pro-inflammatory cytokines. When the fat stores get bigger, they become hypoxic, and they start producing these pro-inflammatory cytokines. And the white adipose tissue is potentially the biggest endocrine organ in the body. In our school days, we are, we thought, uh, we are taught that only the pituitary pancreas are the endocrine organs. Now, the fat on the, even the vascular endothelium has lots of endocrine functions. And also there is a bio-individuality. So that's why we have a different genetic makeup. So that's why the diet in fatty liver disease is not very successful because different ethnics, different body builds, we have a different needs and different patterns. As Siaji had said, but for a majority, the late night eating and the skipping of breakfast, lunch is not, a, is not advisable. So why visceral fat is bad is worse than subcutaneous fat? Because as you see, visceral fat is in the portal system. So it is near and exposed to the gut microbiota and the lipopolysaccharides and the bacterial endo endotoxin <coughs> access to this visceral fat, which makes visceral fat, fat very dangerous for producing pro-inflammatory cytokines, and then RAS system is causing high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, thromboembolic cases, and then atherosclerosis and inflammation, leading to autoimmune disease, kidney failure, and yes, of course, cardiovascular events. Next, I would like to touch on insulin resistance. Insulin is a stimulatory for glucose uptake, glycolysis, glycogen synthesis, protein synthesis, and it prevents gluconeogenesis, glycogenolysis, and lipolysis, ketogenesis, and proteolysis. In a nephil, a fatty liver, there is an increased fat lipolysis. So without the insulin prevents it. Without an insulin, there is increased chances of lipolysis leading to nephil. So in a insulin resistant cases, there will be the stimulation for this insulin resistance are obesity again, secondary free fatty acids, lipoatrophy, genetics, as here when I said aging and physical inactivity. Seafirm, caring for well-being.